Good morning. Checking. Okay. You good? <laughs> Unique New York. <laughs> you ready? The arsonist had oddly shaped feet. That's what I was just about to say. Yo. <laughs> had oddly shaped feet. Oddly shaped feet. <laughs> What's up? Hey, what's cracking, dude? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Dude. <sighs> You're I'm... coming down from that recorder. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it was just Yeah, I just came from a recital. Yeah. And uh, it was all recorders, mm-hmm. right? So it was a lot of like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Seven groups. Seven oh, different dude. groups. <laughs> yeah. Uh, each, each group had three plus songs. So uh, that's why I'm wearing this leather jacket. You look uh, good. Because I came from a, uh, that. <laughs> I was wondering. The, you're the cool dad. <laughs> yeah. I got the Fonzie hair tonight. <laughs> um, yeah. Man, what's a, record, a recorder? What you know you? those recorders, right? Those plastic yeah, flutes. That's what they're playing? Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> the, well, all the things I'll soon learn. I'm sure you know. Well, this. But, yeah. It's weird that this school finds the recorder in, in high regard. <laughs> Enough so. This is definitely what we should do. Th- that's what they're doing. <laughs> that's what yeah. we're going with. But also, real quick, welcome to the Dick and Boonies podcast. Thank you for welcome. Th- thank you for joining us once again today. You heard that voice, that sweet, sweet little voice, mm-hmm. and it is our good friend uh, Lauren Wise. But wait, wait, <laughs> wait for it is what I'm saying. Wait for what Richard's gonna say. Wait, I, I apologize. <laughs> um, you're an editor. You're an editor. You're yes. you're a writer. You're an interviewer. You have journalist. been an interv- a journalist. Mm-hmm. And uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's Happy been a long be time. Here. This is an old homie again. Old homie. Yes. yes. So, it's been a couple decades, almost. Not quite, but. Mm-hmm. So I listened to your podcast interview, The Wordy Travel. Like <laughs> I wanted to know what we were up against. Yeah, because you're in a unique position where you're interviewing an interviewer. That, that is true. Right. That is true. And we got a lot of fucking questions about these things that you did. But you, so I honestly, the greatest thing about. Done a lot. Well, uh, the greatest thing about listening to that podcast is I learned a lot about your career. I had yeah. no idea the vast, the various things that you've done and like where you started and where you are right now. And I was like, oh, this, that's fucking dope. Like you've done some cool fucking shit and you've interviewed people that I didn't even know you had interviewed. Well, I'm glad you learned something. I learned. Because it was it was a long one, and it, it was very... No, it wasn't long. I'm listening to it at times, and I was like... Mm. No, it was only 30 minutes per episode. The, we usually do an hour I, and a half. We yeah, probably won't tonight, true. just because uh, we started late. But like we usually do an hour and a half. That was only... Yeah, <laughs> that's true, I guess. But I learned a lot. And so it was really cool, it was really cool to, to, to find out some of the stuff you've done. So right now, you're an editor. Like, that's the main focus of your career, right? So... Yeah, I, I... Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. I just listened to the <laughs> You are not wrong. Shit. Okay, what It's happened? just, I, I, I <clears throat> focus on a few main things, I guess. So currently, like, what my full-time job is, is as an associate publisher for oh. a book two book publishing companies. But I also have my own company, Midnight Publishing, yes. and that's where I edit books through. Okay. But that's kind of, in the past couple of years... I've just been outsourcing that work as it comes in just right. because I've been focused on I'm actually me- publishing books. I, want, I'm, I meant to say publishing. But I, do- I love editing. I do. I, I love that part of it. But in my current role, I do get to read a lot of books and not have to worry about editing. So that's nice, too. So what what's that? What, what was the company? The, the There's two companies that you work for. Yeah. So the imprints are called She Writes Press and Spark Press. That's that's Yeah, those are the ones. Yeah. Those are the ones. <laughs> Those are the ones. <laughs> so I've been there for like almost seven years now, and wow. then doing my company on the side, and then freelancing as a journalist. So that's where I'm doing the interviews, and Do most get, mostly about music. So when you freelance a interview. Mm-hmm. Do you set the the rate 
if you would, like, do you get paid I for wish. those? You do the interview and then you get to do whatever you want with that interview. Like, you it give it to whoever depends. wants. So okay. I want that. Like, I want that interview. Yeah. So it kind of depends. It depends on what magazine you're working for or pitching or like what you know how like your repertoire with those editors i wish i got to pick my rates are you kidding me like you wouldn't believe how little they pay yeah journalist like i mean i'm not gonna so let's as an example you don't want to talk some shit right now (laughs) (laughs) why so okay basically talk some shit that's what what i do here so i mean as you know you guys they're not gonna hear it comfort for change (laughs) they're not gonna hear it comfort for change was Mm -hmm. actually one of my very first interviews i ever did was that so i was 18 you you fucked up 17 so it was stuck mode no yeah it was comfort for change. If you were eighteen, it was. It like wasn't. Stuck yeah, mode. we were twenties. We were the stuff dudes. I don't. If, I don't remember you, you doing guys? that. How old are we now? Yeah, because I'm you're a lady. Never. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm thinking. thirty six. <sighs> okay, so maybe I was older then because I know. I know. I was Anthony. I still have the article on okay, my portfolio, yeah. and it was comfort. So, then you weren't eighteen. So let's yeah. just so get this. I, let's get this shit straight. Okay? I know <laughs> uh, I'm terrible with going back on that. So I mm. moved back from Los Angeles mm. when I was twenty two, three, two or three, and oh. that's when I joined Comfort. What? Yeah, because yeah. we did Stuck Dudes, oh and then God. they all fucking <laughs> left. They all left stuck me. Stuck Dudes. And they left me, and then I was in a band called Vos. <laughs> Yes, and I then, do remember that name. And then Wes told me I need to drop that shit and get over here where the where they're doing. drop that zero and get with the heroes. Yeah, because you guys had you guys were doing drop tune. That's what it was. Do 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 the low C. <clears throat> jun jun. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. You, I well, then were, I guess it wasn't. You were twenty three, maybe. Maybe. Well, how you're, you're the same age as us, seems, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm thirty. <laughs> so it just seems yeah. weird because it was. You know what? Maybe that was one of my first. It was one of my first paid articles. That's what I'm thinking about. Oh, okay. Because for you a long pa- time I wrote. Who paid you? For free. So it was for a magazine called, it was a local magazine startup called My FM Magazine. I mean, no offense, but no one read it. <laughs> that mm. magazine. None taken. But um, <laughs> they were just trying to like build up. A, and I started there as an intern and then they paid me. But I'm talking like, this, this is like going back to that. I mean, they'll be paying, you know, like. 20, 30 bucks an article. What? Yeah. I wrote... That's why. Even when I'd been writing for like 10 years, I had an interview with Ted Nugent. Yeah. Nice. The, the Nuge did. What? I got paid $15 for it by the wow. Phoenix New Times. Oh, f- you didn't have to pay Ted Nuge <laughs> to interview him? <laughs> no. Nope. He was a character. But it's just crazy because... That, and that was for New Times, you said? Yeah, because wow. they, they just... There's so many people willing to write for free. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... Oh, is They, that like, the don't deal? have to pay what they should be paying. Let's see. I th- so, so, basically, like, how it works in general is... I come up with ideas of, you know, whether it's like, oh, this band's coming through Phoenix, like Mm -hmm. Phoenix New Times. Do you want an interview with this band? Like, I know the publicist or I can try to secure an interview. Do you want to buy it? And they'll be like, yes or no. Um, With magazines that like you, you don't know the editors that well. Like I basically just do a ton of research, stalk the editor till I get their information, reach out to them. I'm like, are you guys accepting freelance pitches? And if they, they're like, yes, then I send them a couple just about new albums coming out or artists going on tour or some cool, unique angle. And they'll be like, yes or no. And then tell me when they want it due and how much the rate is. And I mean, the you know, it, it's crazy because when it comes to music, they're really the, the pay isn't that great unless you're doing something for like Rolling Stone, you know, right. yeah. And God. they're paying like a dollar. And word. you're doing it because you just are fucking stoked to do it. Yeah, because I just like love doing part. it. I mean, it would be great to make a full blown living off of that, but oh, of course, I just didn't try to go that. Isn't that the it's your passion entirely? Thing. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that the way that it goes though? Yeah. Like you find this thing that you really love, and they, it's just like the world just doesn't want to pay you for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. What the hell? It's yeah. like, come on! I can't. I can't be happy and make a living too. Come on. Yeah. yeah. So so let's so you you went to school for uh, journalism yeah right and then you got out and you started doing internships and stuff like that and then w- when did the interviews so 
you interviewed us, I guess, was one of your first ones. But like, <laughs> when did like the big interviews start happening, and how how were you able to, uh, how how were you able to make those happen? Like, was it the company that you were working for, or were you freelancing at that point too, or how? What was the first big one you did? Other than us. <laughs> the Nuge? What was your second big one? Yeah, what was your second? <laughs> Let me think. It was the first one that I was like super like nervous about. I think the first interviews were... So so I have never actually been fully employed at like a music magazine. Like mm -hmm. okay. when it comes to the music writing, it's always been um, freelancing. Yeah. Right. The magazines I have worked for have been like travel and... Rand, like random stuff that because there just aren't any music magazines really based in Arizona it seems like yeah um I remember so I started you know I was freelancing there was this website called examiner.com and yeah. it's something new now but you could it was basically like a glorified blog that was like kind of seen as more professional in the industry okay um, I actually think, I mean, you know, the photographer, Jim Laveau, of course, yeah, of course. so I think he, <laughs> he photographed my wedding. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, awesome. we're boys. He's canceled yeah. on us four times. <laughs> yeah. We're boys, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like your boys do sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, he, so he, I'm pretty sure I, I mean, don't quote me on this, but I think he started out in his photography on that site or some of his writing or it could have just been a secondary outlet for him, you know, cause he's been very successful. Mm. Um, but I was able to secure interviews by saying that I was writing for examiner.com and okay. publicists just seem nice. to be like, Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Da, 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 da. And the and way you weren't lying or being wrong. Like that's no, I just like, and you know, the more you write, the, the more they read your stuff and they're like, oh, okay, like you're legit. Um, and then finding the publicist information is typically pretty easy. I mean, you just have to do a lot of digging online, which as a journalist, like that's easy to do. But like I like if an artist was coming through town, you could go to their Facebook page and literally in about this artist it would say for public, like for media, email this person. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's like I feel like when people they do like some like mentoring for for like high school kids like about music journalism and I'm like you just have to you know you just have to do some digging and it's kind of common sense sometimes like yeah. you just figure out who the professional contact is and have a professional now, do interaction they, yeah. <laughs> do, do they do you do they have to be does the artist ever have to be paid to like give an interview well no because they're tech well I mean I shouldn't say never I guess but I in my experience I mean if they're trying to promote something like a new album right or, okay okay a tour date then they're wanting to do that but my so again it's like so i so i could call like uh i don't know paul mccartney's publicist and be like hey my name is richard i i write for the inquirer and uh, i'd like to do an interview immediately <laughs> when they're I like no <laughs> <laughs> the Inquirer. <laughs> Paul McCartney is hard to nail down. I actually get his press releases, and they're like, "Yeah, no, he doesn't need to do interviews." Is yeah. that that's a I'm work? Like, that's something you're not going to give up on. No, you're gonna never. Keep going you've, after you've, that. you've pursued. Oh yeah, that's so awesome. For like three years, well, like for some reason, sometimes you just get added to these lists, and I have no idea how, but I'm not going to complain. Yeah, and you're getting like, I mean, I probably get like thirty to forty like press emails a day about like music, like artists. And I mean, mostly heavy metal or hard rock, but um, sometimes you get added to these lists and you have no idea how, but I, and so half of them are yeah. kind of not really even looking at, you know, I'm like, unfortunately at this point, I'm not super focused on it. Like it's right. my main source of income. So I'm not really going to pursue writing about like a band I've never heard about For unless sure. some, how it speaks to me, you know, and they're, they're, music but yeah Paul McCartney they're like they're very polite of course oh, but yeah. they're like ah uh, yeah he's not doing interviews at this time yeah, yeah. of course <laughs> you've heard that a million times yeah. so, so. What, what were the big what were the big ones you've done I know oh yeah sorry going back to that so I think the first ones that I that were bigger that I was pretty nervous about was when Mayhem was still out and about and came here and I, I want to say it was like 2000 it's like 2000 
Here 12, maybe? Here we go with the dates. I again. know. Mm-hmm. I go on, Lauren. 2012? You're, go on, Lauren. <laughs> it might have been 2012. I, anyways. Between 2000, it was between 2004 and 2016. I will say this. I know it was, I mean, it was like 15 years ago. I know that. Oh, because. Damn. Well, okay. Yeah. I know, I know that. Anyways, so I got to be on site to do all these interviews, just like one after the other, and it was like... Um, what do you mean on site? Oh, at, like, sorry, at Mayhem. Yeah, like, at, my like at Mayhem, which a lot of my, you know, mo- like 75% of my interviews are over the phone. Yeah. So um, let's see, it was Ray Luzier from Corn. Nice. Which I was just, you know, because I was like, oh my gosh, Corn, like is yeah, one of the so bands sure. that got me into metal, and but of course he was super kind and great and then so and he's also kind of like the last guy you know <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're, like, they're, like, they're like they're like ray That's, you, got you, you got this chick over <laughs> yeah. here you yeah. should have been like i'm here with ray finkel <laughs> <laughs> yeah. monkey's yeah. busy he was probably so ray, stoked you though this one. yeah fuck that dude no he was like, super he's, he's he's fantastic he's yeah, ab- he he's, he's an that... absolute monster on the drums I, yeah. yeah i know i know you never know People are like, oh, yeah, the drummer. I'm like, that is so rude. Like, yeah. no, drummers yeah. are very important. But yeah. um, it I mean, kind of was a good easing into it because then the next one was. Um, uh, same day. Yeah. So I had like six in a row and I was just like. And you're like, bouncing little, around like, all day. Like, oh, my God. You yeah. just got straight. It was. You got a train run on you. <laughs> <laughs> you got that heavy metal train run. <laughs> per- that professional heavy metal train run. This was uh, between 2004 and 2016. Yeah, I, I just, you know. who knows what happened. Whiskey was involved. Um, and then it, then it was Joey Jordison from Slipknot. Oh, and then that's cool. Fuck. There were the, and, and then who Another else drummer. Was that guy died. Yeah, yeah, you got all drummers, yeah. huh? R.I.P. Yeah, he died. Um, all right, all right, and then Otep. Which oh, she's a shit, dude. That's yeah. awesome. She's amazing. She's extremely intimidating. Is she, yeah. Is her name Otep? I'm scared of her. What about um, O Town? Like her. <laughs> and then they I went straight over to the O Town tent. I want to know about O Town. <laughs> Are they are they you're my sh- butterfly sugar baby? No, that was Crazy Town. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Crazy Town. <laughs> How much Dude, time? Did you Crazy Town is playing here with Green Jelly in like a week? Did you guys nice. know that? I bet Lit's I opening up. I kind of want to go, but I'm like why is Crazy Town playing with Green Jelly? Yeah, that is interesting. I thought their combo. singer like disappeared on meth or something and, like went AWOL. Yeah. You know I how many no people depending on that. who's opening, you know how many people are going to leave? <laughs> And or show up later. Oh, yeah. Because that's different. Dude, green jelly is the best. Like, it, why? I yeah, mean, they're just outrageous. That's a, it's, just, it's a different. Hmm. So Otep how came? Much, yeah. How much time do you get with them? Um, It kind of, it just depends on what they're feeling. Like, sometimes I've had interviews where the publicist is, like, sitting on the phone. Like, who who was that? It was, um, I think it was Corey Taylor. I don't know. It was Peter Frampton. They, this pub, his publicist, like, basically was like twenty, like twenty five <laughs> minutes. Like, basically, is just like last question, please. Like, they're just sitting on the phone. Like, they have to they carve out a time and they're like, yeah. you got to hit this. Um, in person, I mean, I think it was like a fifteen minute. Each was a fifteen minute window. Okay. Um, but then there's some people who were, and it's so funny because it's it's almost like some of the like bigger people who don't even need to be doing interviews or just like. All the time in the world. Like, I, on my birthday a couple years ago, I got to interview um, Zach Wild in the morning. And then. Um, is he Rob, big? Is he big? He is a big guy. He's tall. Yeah. Okay. He's well, a big guy, but he's like a big teddy bear. Well, I, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, you know when like you think someone's tall for your whole life and then you go yeah. see him and you're like, look at this little guy. I mean, but a lot yeah. of people are this tall to me. So. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you can tell. Yeah. I you mean, he's. Yeah, he's he's great though. Um, he was a sweetie pie. Super, yeah, he's and I've been lucky enough to just to interview him several times. Oh nice. Um, I got to interview him in person, but then in the afternoon I got to interview Robert Plant on the phone. Yeah, yeah. And literally, so I'm I like was working in Tempe at the time. I left like for an early lunch break to go interview Zach Wild, like. Just because I was like, okay, I'm on my lunch break. I'm going to go to, like, Marquee. Like, where is that? And then in the afternoon, I, like, rushed my car to do the rubber plane interview on the phone. My boss is like, 
What the hell is going on? Well, I mean, if you can't Dude. get Paul McCartney, you might as well get Robert <laughs> well fucking. Get, yeah, so, I guess he'll do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he'll do. No, so I'm sitting there, and I mean, I don't know about you guys. I usually have my phone like on just vibrate only. Like I never yeah. have the ringer on. Never. And I forgot that my ringer is a Led Zeppelin song, and so all this, I had the ringer on just like sitting there waiting, and all of a sudden it just blasts out like, "Oh shit!" To go. Oh, and I'm just oh, like my nice. flipping my phone out of my hands, like <laughs> freaking out. Like, <laughs> Hello. When and you he, answered, was it was it Robert? Yeah, like <laughs> he, he he didn't have. Oi. He's, he's like, just like, like and he, he, yeah. no, yeah, he, and he's like, happy birthday, love. I was just like, oh, oh my God. Robbie Pan. Yeah, and he Come talked on. to me for like 45 minutes, like not a care in the world. Because he didn't have, he's he chilling. He's chilling. Yeah. It's like yeah. you just Fuck, never know. dude. I, you know, when you said that, uh, like it's the, the more famous people or the bigger, the bigger celebrities are the ones who like have all the time in the world. I think it's because um they like publicists they're like they'll be like fuck you like yeah. they're like i think the publicists are almost intimidated by their mm. client whereas like some of the lower end guys they're like you know trying to tell them what 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 time it is you're not gonna fucking tell robert plant no shit. that's true you know what i mean time's almost up <laughs> robert's yeah. like oh really Suck yeah that. yeah well it's like called from home like, did he talk to you from his home? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what that's, time was it like, here? You guys just had good... He was like, I can't wait to have good conversation with someone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, he was... I mean, well, plus I'm sure they're minutes. enjoying the interview. And they know I'm not... I mean, obviously, no, I'm not trying to... And you're not obnoxious. Start shit, and, you know, yeah, and like poke him about things. I'm like, about, I just really want to know right. about the music. And what, it was when his last solo album was coming out. Um, It was, it was like early afternoon here. So I wonder what time it was there. Evening. So <laughs> no, but let, really I don't know. Let's say, hold on. Let's say, give me a time. I just wanted to see, just for my own. So let's let, say like one one p.m. One p.m. Things and that, you had just got done with the Zach Wild in person at Marquee. Yeah, like earlier that morning. Did you go home that night? Like after you got the phone with Robbie, <laughs> and just look in the <laughs> mirror and go, "That was a day." Yeah. Like that was, was a fucking day. I was like, this is the best birthday ever. Wow. What time was it? Yeah. It would be 8 p.m. His time. It's only there seven hours yeah. difference. Yeah, no. He was having a tea and fucking <laughs> Cross the pole. wanted to just chill. And I don't rap. know if it's just What did like you this? ask him? Yeah. What the fuck did you ask him? I mean, you could read the article, but. Okay. <laughs> but we have you here. <laughs> oh, God. I called you Lauren Wise. Okay. I'm a piece of shit. I don't shit. read anything. Oh I'm God. a piece of shit. I didn't like change my name for work. I, I know. Mean, I, it's kind of hard to do that like when you're a writer, I feel like. Let's see. I'm going to look up the article. You don't remember what Kim you asked? Kim Kardashian me. West did it. What? Kim Kardashian West did what? Changed her name. Oh, yeah. But You got to love this. I can Google Robert Plant Lauren Wise and it comes up. That's cool. That is fucking cool, dude. So it was, that's right. It was about Led Zeppelin turning 50. It was oh, a 50 years anniversary. Whoa. Robert Plant turning 70. So this was in 2018. You know what I would have yeah, only... No, I, not long ago. My no. very first question would have been, dude, your dick. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew it was going to be it. I knew he was going to say, do you wear a cup? Dude, your dick looks good, <laughs> man. Yeah. What you are you... see the... I could see the shaft. I could yeah. see the helmet, dude. Yeah, yeah. What? What? What are you? Is that a prosthetic? Do you think they like, sandpaper like the that little distress the you know? Oh yeah, to, where, where <laughs> had, like a wallet distressing, you know, where the cock uh, is to kind of. And he <laughs> when he would sing, he would just let that dick out. <laughs> yeah, dude. I you could just be like, let's roll up plans <laughs> peen. I. <laughs> You didn't ask him that. What I didn't. What, uh, num what number came up felt on your tad phone inappropriate. when he called you? You called him. No. What he was the number? Uh, what what number? I think it was. A <laughs> Did you <laughs> save her on your phone? Dude? The number was. Uh, no, usually they're pri they're like. Yeah, no, it's a stupid numbers. question, but yeah. I thought I had to ask. Although them. I will tell you, I have had some interviews where I'm called directly, and I'll, I'll say I'll straight up save that number. Okay, like, for sure. This is a. Uh, Let's see. Well, Vince? One that I've I got this. some celebrity. I got Vince. some. And I'm like, I'm sure they change it every year. What you know, celebrity but... numbers do you have in your phone? I got a few in mine Let's now. Let's see. I've got Tech yeah, Nine. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Let's but see. I got Tech he's Nine. Also, <laughs> he's also from my hometown in Kansas, though, so that's a little different. Tech Nina? Yeah. Whoa. I know. He's been doing awesome stuff lately. 
He's very relevant still. Do you have Coach crazy. Vince? Let's see. I have Wes's, but that was from a long time ago interview. Oh, really? Yeah, I got to interview. Well, yeah, that was a long time ago. And then Fred Durst, which, like, I I mean, I was a Limp Bizkit fan, like, back in yeah. the day. Like, Who the fuck was it? I was For a sure. huge fan. They were like, the major. So to me, I was super, super, like, super stoked to interview Wes and Fred. I was like, this is Did you awesome. do, was it a combo uh, no. interview? It was separate? Mm-hmm. Were they phone calls? Mm-hmm. How, how was Fred? He was fine. Was he good? I mean, yeah. it wasn't like my favorite interview by any means. Like it, it's, it's hard sometimes because it's like you, you work really hard to come up with questions that you think are good. Yeah. And sometimes people just aren't like that responsive or you can tell they're bored. Oh. Or just that they've had like, so that's why I always try to do interviews. I, I would like tell publicists like, um, could I like, when are you starting them? Because you don't want to be the person, like, you don't want to be seven interviews in. Because they'll do that. They'll just have a yeah. day of straight interviews, and then they're just so over it mm-hmm. by the time they get to you. Or the person's yeah, just so not responsive. Yeah. And we have. Or the interviewer is boring. Had, I mean, you really <laughs> never know. Uh, that might be our case. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you're like, and you work hard to prepare these questions, and we're just like, <laughs> yeah, we know what that's like. <laughs> Uh, but we've had we've had a couple of guests on where you you ask them a very specific question that could easily turn into like a really good conversation, mm-hmm. but it's like just a yep, yeah, and yes. then you're like you're like it's the worst. All right, because you have to the 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 hard port of the hard port of be out. <laughs> so the hard port or be out. Um, no, so the hard part about getting questions together is you have to make it so it's not a yes or no question mm-hmm. I, and so it's hard because like you want to know is it yes or no yeah. and then you you want yes and then elaborate <laughs> yep. yes not and. just yes yeah. do you like them yes okay well fuck me then you know yeah. like I, I that's I always and then if it's like a you know a semi-famous person I get a little heated like I, my, I start to get hot and then I'm like <laughs> And then I like out of body experience, and Start then I'm sweating. like, "This is being filmed," and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, "I do too. I get really nervous in interviews still, still. and I get like sweaty. I'm like, <sighs> "You interviewed Robert Plant, and you still get nervous." Oh, about. what were yeah, your well, so? What were your big ten then? Ten. You did God. Vince. You did Vin, uh, Coach Vince, right? That's Alice Cooper. He was my <laughs> <I'm all laughs> coach. Ben. He was my coach. Ellis, yeah, I he's he's awesome. Was he he's, adorable? Was he just adorable? He's just great. Him and his wife, like it, during like during quarantine, I did an interview with them, and they actually they were. <laughs> this sounds weird, but they were like too naked. Uh, they were. <laughs> <laughs> they were just so you know, we're naked right now, both of and us. we don't care. <laughs> they like fa- found out. I did the interview right after I found out I was pregnant. Oh, and. I ended up like telling like they like knew before my parents even oh, knew that's because awesome, I was like, though. I got to tell somebody. Yeah. Um, and they like started like throwing around names and everything. And oh, I was yeah, like, dude. um, yeah, Alice Cooper is pro is definitely up there. One that's different too. It's like when you get to interview people multiple times, and yeah. they start to remember you sometimes and then you can kind of have that. There's more of a comfortable situation. Yeah, yeah like, Zach Wilde's like, <clears throat> what up, Stubbs? Yeah. <laughs> he said that oh, earlier, man. and I was like, oh, my God, dude. That's right. I about Stubbs. Uh, uh, it's an, it's, it's it's an a, insider. It's joke. an insider. Stubbs. No one's allowed in. I gotta, before we continue, let's, let's talk a little bit about our history. Uh, <laughs> so, um, well, because I... How, Might okay. need some more whiskey. Yeah, no, so... <laughs> We're not going to go. It's not going to go. We're not going to make you kidding. uncomfortable. No, it's, it's but I was having trouble do. remembering how our friendships. Do you need another? Yeah, she did say it. <laughs> you did. I did. While I was talking or nope. before. I think you thought she I was joking. Floor. My bad. There we go. <laughs> I'm not whiskey. a very good listener. <laughs> it's a lot of whiskey. Was that a lot? Um, so away. I couldn't remember. Did we. You, you obviously dated our guitar player, and mm-hmm. that's how, like, we really got close because, like, you were then, like, involved in the activities that we were doing. Yeah. Um, but how did we meet you before <laughs> then? Like, I don't remember exact because I know because yeah. I knew Missy and, like, mm-hmm. you were friends with Missy. And yeah. so obviously there was that connection. But, like, was it was Anthony before or after? I'm fairly positive that I I met you 
before any of the dating of the Anthony. Okay. <laughs> because okay. so Could, I also so I mean you you guys I mean like you guys remember like Trevor and Jorge and yeah, Rodriguez, yes, 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 yes. So I was friends Jorge. with them. <laughs> Dead. Oh, hey. <laughs> so, so I actually see like Trevor on occasion and oh, really? Rick D's just out and about. Oh, Rick D's. And we've like hung out with them a few times. Like, I don't know, we were at Patty's like a couple years ago and ended up going back to Trevor's house or something. I don't know. It was just funny because nice. Brandon and my husband, he's like, oh, he's like, this makes sense. These are all the like, guys you hung out with. Because yeah. we were just talking about all these memories. Just so old um, school, yeah. But so we <laughs> would hang out with them a lot. Okay. And I think you started coming to shows, obviously. Yeah, and so it was basically it was Missy. Missy was yeah, like Missy. the common point there. She was the yeah. denominator. And then you guys, you know, were hanging would hang out with those guys. So I think it was just partying just the chicks, at the same time. The chicks in general, like all of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Do you know I wrote a song about you? Yes. Okay. I do. Did you? Did I tell you? Or did somebody else? I don't think I would have told you no, that. I She's think... like, no, I heard it. And I'm like, I know that's about me. <laughs> the song was called Broken Pictures. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, wait, I wait, think... It's actually, <laughs> wait a <laughs> second. Wait, wait. I want to know listen, more about listen, this. Listen. It's actually still in my iPod. And it's not It's not like... A, <laughs> my iPod. It's not a rude song. No, it's, it's a very truthful song it's about... It's a tragic tale. Young Two young people who just did stupid shit and yeah. hurt each other we're, yeah. unnecessarily. Like, yeah. just being young and making bad decisions. Yeah. And I love how I thought I knew, like, I listened to but my... But it was mostly about me making bad decisions. It was, <laughs> it was about hurting, but it was about There was some bias in there. Yeah, there but was I, some bias in there, <laughs> but, which makes sense. You guys are the same band. But lyrically, I wasn't, it wasn't, Right. Like I didn't you weren't bash. picking a side. I didn't bash on anybody. It was, no. It was more of like a tragic mean. love story. Yeah, it wasn't mean. No, it wasn't mean. And I, I don't like... know how I think I mean I'm guessing Anthony told me. Yeah, maybe. Well, how else would Just I have Just to be known? a dick? That's a weird thing to t- cuz I know I wouldn't have told you. I I I only told I'm Anthony. Guessing. Because who else who else would have? Mm. My girlfriend's going to hate the fact that I wrote a song about somebody and not her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, she gives me so much shit. She's like, you, never... you were writing songs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> are you not writing at all anymore? Nah. No, I, I yeah, mean. I actually want to know what you guys do, are doing in terms <clears throat> of like if you're doing anything musical. musically at all or not, or not. We 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 like we do the male version of 69 <clears throat> for like a couple of weeks and then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it fades. You know what I mean? We go, I suck. I, I'm on his cock. He's on mine. And we, and then, and then it, and then we realize that we have a thousand kids and re, like real careers and, yeah. and things going on. And then it just fizzles out. The cool mm-hmm. thing about doing that with Cam though, is that we're not, we're not like bullshitting ourselves. Yeah. Like we get yeah. together. It's a fun little thing. We think like, there's other people around that like are try to encourage us to like do music, but it's all bullshit. Like when Cam and I just like get together and we're thinking we're going to do something, we just do it and we have fun or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's neither of us are doing anything. And the thing is, is that we know that we could, we could, it's not like a pipe dream bullshit thing. It's like, yeah, I mean, literally if we just uh, were aligned better. Well, it could be a thing. Like we have this package over here that we just can't open. I've been feeling because we don't have time. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's the problem with being creative. Is it's like you really have to make it a priority above things that you shouldn't. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's why some really successful sure creative people don't, don't forget about that microphone. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. That's why some really creative people are also insane. You oh know? yeah, and have really dysfunctional families because they put that passion for I mean not saying that's what any of us would do I'm just saying I totally get it because you have to make it a priority and when you don't have time I mean yeah you you really you do you know yeah. you really just have to if you want to get the best out of it yeah we've to. written some dope songs like in the last five years let's say you know we've written a couple of, of great tunes but yeah, put, yeah potential things yeah but I mean it just it just sort of sizzles out and you just get back to like regular life because mm-hmm. it feels so good. Like when Cam and I sit down to actually create music, it feels really good. Mm-hmm. It's very comfortable and it is. It's, it's like a fart after a date. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. It's like, oh man, that's you would, 
good. Yeah. <laughs> You've been holding it all yeah. night. Yeah. It's a date fart. Dude, I, so I don't, I don't fart in front of my girlfriend. Smells equally as good. I don't fart in front of my girlfriend. Like, I don't, dude, I don't fucking poop. You know what I mean? Like, as far as she knows, I don't do anything gross. And so the other night. Really? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I'm, I'm. How is it even possible? I hold my farts. That's terrible. It's the worst. <laughs> Not I'll excuse me. myself for I a sip to. of water just to let him rip. No, but I... <laughs> I've been farting for years now. <laughs> well, I'm like, sometimes it just happens, right? Dutch. That's yeah, what I did. Like I, I did the other... I mean, you're like, and then what are you going to do? Pretend that wasn't it? No. I farted so loud in front of her <laughs> like three nights ago, and we died. It was so... It was actually a really good bonding moment. Well, yeah, you're a band nice. off. That's I next let, level. I let a, <laughs> a doozy really go. serious now. <laughs> I mean, it was all that a pent doozy. up over <laughs> years. <laughs> That's a fart I've been holding in for a year now. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. So, oh um, my god, that's so funny. That's yeah. weird. It doesn't really smell. <laughs> yeah, it was just air. Yeah, it's just air. It was just actual. That's even better if it yeah. didn't even smell. Yeah, if you can pull that off. Um, no, but I, I get what you're saying. I mean, I've had people because because I try to do a lot of just writing for myself, like, and yeah. that has nothing to do with selling it. I mean, maybe eventually. And I'm like, I just don't have time to do this. And I have other writer friends who are all, dude, I get up at 4.30 in the morning every day and write for an hour. You do? Before I have to do anything. And they're like, but it gets it out of the way and it's great. And I'm like, and, I can't do that. Oh, and oh this is the other okay, thing gotcha. about that. I don't know, that. not me. I was I, like, what the fuck are you doing with a with a 15-month-old getting up at 4.30 no, to write? I mean, there's... You, that's what they were saying to you. Yeah. yeah, they're like, if you're really, if you really, really want to prioritize it and it makes you feel great when you do it, because mm-hmm. it does, like, when you do that stuff, like, and then you have this amazing, like, adrenaline rush of just happiness, and you know that's what makes you happy. What kind of stuff would you write, though? Like, you do the journalism stuff, and you interview people and you edit stuff like what if you it was if it was lauren and paper what would go down so (laughs) i've actually been working on a novel for friggin' years um yeah and i finished it in quarantine last year but it's a total shit show like i sent it to my the the girl who I basically handed my company over to um to uh do ed- edit all the books like she's this amazing she's just amazing writer and editor and I was like just read this and just be straight up with me and tell yeah. me how shitty it is or if it's good like I'm gonna pay you to do like I'm paying you just tell me exactly what your thoughts are what and genre is it so it's, and I, I really am bad at this. Like I can't do an elevator Lauren, pitch. This is, I know this is already bad. I'm just telling you. Well, because I'm actually like rewriting it all right now. But okay. it's in short, it's set in 2045. It's about two sisters, um, and it's it's about how when you die, a company is on the cusp of discovering how when you die, you can upload your consciousness like to oh. an an a, like a a. An avatar? A uh, mixed reality li- like landscape. Oh, okay. And there's, I mean, there has been stuff recently that, that's come out about this in movies and shows. And I'm just like, damn it. Yeah, there's because a show- I've been developing this idea for years. There's and a then, show that just recently, like yeah, last year, came I f- out. I forget the name of it, but you can upload your consciousness, and then you, as the it's a really good show. Watcher, you don't really know that's what you're looking at. So I've been trying to watch these shows to catch up, so I know, so I make sure I don't copy any of them. Lauren, God damn it! How I long know. have you been? How long have you been developing? Oh, it? I started yes. writing this when I was like 19. Oh my bullshit. god! Bullshit. Damn. Dog. So I finished it. Yeah. So when I was pregnant in quarantine, I finally finished it, like right before he was born, and sent it to her and she gave me all these notes and she's like, yeah, it's good, but it has to be entirely rewritten. <laughs> and I was like, gotcha, okay. What, did she make you privy to all the things that had come out? Oh, yeah, because I like I pay, I was like, I need to know, you because you don't know, like, I, it's like, you you know, you get close to a project and you have no idea where it goes, like, I mean, on, honestly, like, with writing for me, like, it sounds cliche, but, like, one of my favorite quotes is from Stephen King and because some writers like outline and others just write and let the story go where it goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we're talking about books yeah. and he always says that he can only see uh, writing a novel is like driving a car at night. You can only see as far as your headlights go. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's completely what happened with me. And it just went like off the rails. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know and she, and she's like, you know. she's like, it's really, really dark and depressing. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Yeah. Not happy You're at all? You're all moody and quarantined? <laughs> and hormonal what? and pregnant. Why? And she's like, yeah, like I felt, she's like, it's the most, be- she was like, it's the most beautiful writing I've ever read. She's like, but it's really dark. Mm. I'm like, okay, I guess it makes sense. I was Which pregnant. Which is that bad? Is I that? Yeah, I was not as I was gonna. That's why, why, why. Well, yeah, I mean, so I was quite as why, why, why. It just depends what you're going for. I was like, yeah, yeah this makes sense. I was pregnant. I was quarantined. I had COVID while I was pregnant. You were farting a lot. Oh, no. Nice. Then I got valley fever while pregnant. I'm oh, like, what? Yeah. And That's people, a thing? Really? I thought the last case was 1942. No, no. They're, they're dog, popping up a right? lot. That's they're, what I've heard. They're, they're popping up a lot right now. Oh, they're yeah, popping people, up? Yeah. Yeah. Cam Remember knows Missy? he watches the news. <laughs> Missy was like, don't my dogs get that? I'm like, no, apparently not. <laughs> yeah, I got COVID when I was eight months pregnant. Oh, my God. And then a month later, valley fever. And valley fever was actually worse than COVID because it was light COVID, but with, like, full body chicken pox is what it felt like. Oh, really? Because you get a full body rash, except for under torso. It's super weird. Protect the baby. The, huh. Well, no, that's just valley fever. Like, oh. you get it everywhere but your torso. It's, oh, it's the only way my doctor knew what it was and they used me as a guinea pig for a long time because they're like you're pregnant with covid and yeah you're fever. a research yeah gold mine yeah, yeah. Uh, it was awful COVID. damn dude you're gangster uh, it was awful and i'm like this baby better have fucking superpowers like yeah does he i hope so <laughs> i mean he started daycare and he's sick all the damn time but he doesn't seem affected by it's not your kid, it's daycare. Me being, Fucking daycare, yeah. I swear. He doesn't swear seem affected by me having COVID, so that's good. And I'm like, you seem on par with where you're supposed to be, <laughs> age-wise. So, so how are you doing good. with being a mommy? I mean, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> nice. This is what it was like. She goes, it was, it's good. It's fine. You know. It's, it's, no, it's a beautiful, terrifying... <sighs> horrendous thing yeah yeah it's everything <laughs> it's all the it's thing. all the shit you're like to a jug this i love this little shithead but i also don't want to be a parent today yeah too oh my god yeah and that's how i feel 50 percent of the time and it just is what it is and I it's mean. okay and it's normal and, and that's yeah, what it is. and don't feel bad about that and you know I what know, i try not to and no, then especially as a woman because people are always like you can't work full time and have him at your house like without a nanny. And I'm like, no, because I wouldn't be working at all unless I was going to sit him in front of a TV. Like people are crazy. I used to judging. allow people to talk to me like that, like yeah. would tell me that these are the things I need to do. And now I either just go, OK, like that and yeah. then just blow it off or I'll just be like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have a fucking clue. Yeah. I, yeah. I go, my experience is not yours, and you don't tell me what the fuck I'm going to do ever. Yeah. Like, I got to a point where so many people were offering so many suggestions where I would just be like, yeah, and fuck you, too, yeah, also. Cute. And yeah. fuck you. Hear it. I'm like, I, I, I'm okay. Like, it's I don't yeah. need to do anything you say. Yeah. No, that's so true. And I know it that's is. normal, too. But it's yeah. I think it's especially hard as a woman. Like, I definitely get it's an interesting push and pull of wanting, you know, of working full time and wanting to work. Yeah. And then there's almost like a stigma around a woman and like how they're supposed to how how their professional career should be as a, uh, you know, once you have a child or this, that and the other. And I'm like. Dude, are we have we not figured this out now? Yeah. Like I know, it's that crazy. everyone is sort of different and like yeah. they have different uh, aspirations and whatever. Mm-hmm. And a woman and, and here's the other thing also, I have to say like when people say like a woman is supposed to be doing that like my specific experience having the woman like the mother of the children just fucking bail on life. I'm like don't fucking say none of, your things none of that stuff. Like in my yeah. personal experience, it doesn't resonate with right. me when you say yeah. shit like that. So a woman can do anything just like a man can do mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. We could fuck up. We can leave. We can have careers. We can't. It's like, dude, just take care of your babies. Like yeah. just, it, just yeah. take care of your babies. However the fuck that you can manage that. It doesn't yeah. have to, it's not a woman or a man related and there's not a written, or specific it's thing. It's not a written thing. No. Yeah, no. which is true. And my family has gone through that too. My brother, my older brother was a single dad for quite a while. My sister-in-law passed away like maybe, well, 
<clears throat> took her own life actually, mm. like eight years ago when her their two boys. And my brother calls it twins the hard way because they're like fourteen months apart. Um, oh, but she basically before that like just disappeared completely, and he was a single dad, and they lived in Texas, Damn. where it's extremely ways in favor of the mother, and the shit that he was put through in court was insane. Like I've never like it was crazy for years with my family and just it, it's just you know and it's just people always assume it's like men like messing up all the time like mm-hmm. with kids and I'm like that is not the case at all in it's, my experience yeah I mean it's mm-hmm. I, I think it's I think it maybe it's just it's more brought to light or I, I think maybe just the I information there there's certain, more information out there now that there, shows you that yes it's probably still majority men you know being the ones who fucking peace out. I'll bet that it's the majority. However, I think it's starting to even out a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The crazy thing is like Arizona, I used to think was a total mom state, but it is not. No. And I've heard, uh, I know a per- personally there's, there's. Uh, well, not compared to other states. So like California, you're fucked if you're a dude for everything. Like you, if you get, if you get married and like divorced, like you're paying so much out, like alimony and like they fucking hate men in California, <laughs> which is fine, whatever. Um, but yeah, <laughs> here in Arizona, whatever. they're pretty they're pretty cool to the to the guy and and to a fault sometimes. It shouldn't be either way. Honestly, I just wish yeah. that like court systems would would look at the actual situation case mm-hmm. by case and and yeah. really understand the case what's going on yeah. not just not just use they're like oh I've, i'm doing no 10 of these today it. whatever you know yeah. they're just gonna be like this i'm awarding this i'm awarding that it's like if they actually took the time to really look at what the situation was mm. you can make the right choice mm-hmm. like if it's a custody battle oh my goodness yeah it's awful like we went through it for years and it was just outrageous like my sister-in-law was an addict and put the kids in danger so often but and so my brothers are both very large men my older brother is six eight and my younger brother is Fuck. six six and she was Jeez. basically my size and so anything that happened or that she claimed that happened like the cops were immediately like yeah oh no like you clearly you're you know. a big man yeah so you and obviously it was just it was her. crazy like Oh. And I, it just made my family at least realize like the court system is just outrageous. And it yeah. didn't change until basically we got him to Arizona um, and could just, you know, prove that thing that he should be having full custody and all that. Like it was nuts. There's just so much more work you have to <clears throat> do to prove this thing yeah. that's real yeah. than what is already wired, pre wired. In the system exactly. for them to think already. Yeah. So I have I, to say, I love your socks. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> They're penelopes. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend, we're sock people. Um, we share socks. We give each other socks. We trade socks. Um, and uh, so that's... <laughs> trade that's, socks? What we bit? Trade socks. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, because her say back the fuck up. Yeah, she's got way cuter feet too, so it's like the sock. Richards are like pineapples. <laughs> back the fuck up. Um, okay, uh, I wanted to ask you this. Uh, what the fuck did I want to ask you? Wow, I just I had it and I lost it. That's weird. Mm. No, it's we not were that talking weird. about her history. It does happen? I know, but. Uh, let's talk about early onset dementia. <laughs> Damn, no, seriously, dude, dude, I forget. Yeah, no, I know what it was. I know what it was. God damn it. Thank you. Um, thank you guys for giving me time to think for a second. I have always wanted to know this. I don't, I, I want to know what, what is the reason you got into Pantera? And like, when I think of you, I think of Pantera. Like oh, I Aww. just I just those those two things <laughs> go sweet. together. Oh, yeah. it's sweet. <laughs> uh, where's your? You have a tattoo, right? I do. Yeah. On the back of my neck. On the back. And I got it in L.A. When you we have were CFH all there. back there. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, dude. I knew I, I remember things 
in a weird way. I got I'm like, that you got when we were in L.A. for that New Year's party. Oh, really? At Gordon, not Gordon's? Was it Gordon's place? It the, the dump? dump. Yes, it was That's the, the dump. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Anthony and I went and got, he got that one on his chest. Yeah. yeah. The, the hands? Yeah. yeah. And yes. then I got. The rosary. Yeah. On the and back. you got Cowboys from Hell? <laughs> he got a rosary and I'm like, so I want cooler. Cowboys from Hell on my yeah. neck, please. <laughs> and the dude was like, are you sure about this? I, yes. Because I, here's the thing, dude. I don't think I was legal to drink then. And that and so it was weird at yeah, the dump. Yeah, none of us so, were. No. So that's what I mean. That means we were 20. So. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, because, yeah, because yeah. you were still in that. Okay. Yeah, all right. So that's, all, that Richard all checks for out. Sure that stuck, dude. Underage. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> that that <laughs> checks out. I was the youngest. Yeah, a lot of mice were killed at that at that residence. Uh, mm. Just straight stomped out. Um, mm. You know, there was pit bulls eating rats. It was fine, but yeah, that place was intense. Yeah, it was cool. Um, it actually, it it was the weirdest, coolest fucking place was, of all time. Yeah. Yeah. But what? How did you get into Pantera? Who who showed them to you? Like what? Because it's a we. I remember it was just a weird thing for me to like meet. Like a pretty girl who was like, I fucking a metal love yeah. Pants Era. I mean, it's crazy. It's funny because I feel like I still meet people, and when they like find out that I, I'm a heavy metal journalist, or even sometimes when I'm interviewing musicians, and they're like, I don't know. They just like find it weird. I think just a woman in general. Yeah. Which I have an interesting story about that. I'll tell after. But um, so. I played classical piano when I was a kid. Okay. Um, I would play competitions like really? from nine to tw- to like fourteen. I you know have of course you guys have been to Nordstrom before, right? You know they have the piano player. Never. So Never I used been. to play the piano. <laughs> At Nordstrom. Nordstrom? Well, I'm like, is there is Nordstrom even around? Like <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been to a mall in Hell God yeah. knows how long. Yeah, it's around. <clears throat> yeah, I go there. They, even, often. Yeah. they got a rack even. They got a they, they got, got a rack. rack. I mean, I know they got the rack. Yeah, they got the rack. They got the cans. <laughs> <laughs> Big cans. Um, so I played classical piano. I played in all these competitions and. I um, had a friend in Kansas City who put stained on one day. And I was 12 or 13. Stained, and then he put on, what was that punk band? Zebrahead? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if I would classify them as a punk band, but that's uh, yeah, a, it I, punk I, it's sure. weird that you said the band Zebrahead. Yeah. Why? That, it, it's an obscure reference. Yeah. Yeah, that was they actually, were not big. That was actually the first concert I ever went to. Is Zebra? Zebra Head? Head? Yeah, and I was twelve oh or thirteen. God. Yeah, that's so cool. My, <laughs> mine was the Meat Puppets. Oh, right, that's cool too. <laughs> Kim, what was yours? No doubt. Yeah, really. My, my mom. Him. My mom took us. No way. Me and Taylor yeah. went to our first concert together. The Vandals. No doubt. The Vandals opened up, and then Cake. <laughs> And then no doubt, <laughs> whatever. Dude, I've dude. never even seen no, no doubt. Cake live. was terrible. Cake worse. is good, dude. Cake was the I first like and cake. worst show I've ever I love seen. Love cake, dude. I like cake too. Yeah. No, yeah, cake's music's great. Their show was <laughs> it dog was shit. terrible. Yeah, yeah. I believe you even remember shit. that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, so okay, so you go to your yeah, first show. Okay, so Zebrahead. I was um, so we listened to Stained on the way to Zebrahead, and I never heard Zebrahead. I was just like, I hung out with a bunch of skater dudes. Like, it's just you know troublemaker smoking pot all the time like Mm -hmm. this group of guys who were actually very like respectful no they weren't cool okay okay but the video we were the cool ones when we did that Uh, we're in kansas city like i guess you weren't if you did it but anyways so i went home and i was just like oh my god like he had mud shovel on and i was like this song is amazing Uh, yeah so i went home and i just started doing like research about hard rock and heavy metal and encyclopedias i found oh yeah my parents <laughs> had like my parents had a whole set Pantera's no. the P so i asked my <laughs> so i asked my brother my older brother i was because he would get all these cds he like would listen to hip-hop and metal but hide them in other cds because my parents were all like overprotective so we'd have oh, like wow. he had like metallica and like bach and like pantera oh, and like metallica yanni Sydney, yeah show Kenny g but yeah. white zombie behind it. So I was like, yeah. chat, like I need, like I need to know about this music more. So he's like, go through all my CDs. Um, and so that's where I discovered Metallica. And it just kind of like led me to Pantera. And I just kept associating heavy metal with classical. Like if you take out the vocals, okay, it's just so similar. Like just in the instrumental element, you know, of like the passion, the slow parts and like the angry parts. 
Oh, I guess that, that's <clears throat> an interesting take. I dime. like it. Yeah, dime. like you just want to listen dime. to like dime on solos for ten minutes yeah. and then play like Mozart or something. I mean, it's just it's to he me it's very could, similar because he's a classically trained. He just music. yeah would he could shred all that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I started listening to. I mean, I didn't start with Pantera's earliest albums, obviously, which is probably a good thing because their first three were like glam metal. Yeah. It was like what was that like right. eighty. This is before they yeah. got one eighty three, eighty four, and then so and then obviously Walk came with out. Terry whatever is fuck Terry Glaze Terry Glaze yeah <laughs> dude, yeah but no. um yeah and <laughs> when I just I just fell in love with the instrumentals and Phil's voice I was like this is incredible yeah and I mean I just felt like the guitar playing was amazing I felt like their dynamic was just so different you know. You know, it's, you know what's crazy is because, like, Pantera wasn't one of, like, the big ones around my house. So, like, I didn't really get into it until I was, like, later in high school, like, junior, senior year, because Cam fucking loved them and stuff. And so you then dive into it. I wish I would have gotten into it earlier because, like, the stuff that was in my house was, like, <clears throat> Smashing Pumpkins and... Uh, like uh, Pearl Jam and like a lot of the shit that like my brother was into. He just like didn't, he was into Pantera, but he never gave it to me or mm-hmm. whatever. And then like corn hit. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, I was just corned out. The dude. new metal came in it. Yeah. 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 And so Pantera was the liaison between, um, you know, fucking Motley crew. Yeah. And, you know, heavy metal Pop now rock. that we know it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then yeah. Taylor got me into the Deftones. Mm-hmm. And that, and so once that's that's the that's where the switch flipped. Yeah. So once I got into the Deftones, I was like, oh, there it is. This is the only thing. <laughs> this is the only thing that matters. And yeah. now, yeah. and now, I can't even listen to them because really? I yes, because I overdid it. Interesting. I over. Did you like overdosed. crosses at all? What? Did you like crosses at all? Yes. I love yeah. crosses. I did like it. That is like the best. Sex music. Oh my god. Yeah, oh, it's good like, sex no, music. Yeah, it's atmosphere. Actually, actually, yeah. there's there's like uh, um, a hole in the earth. The Deftones record, Hole in the Earth, has like four really good sex songs on it. Mm. And then um, you know, I'll go back to the crosses thing. So <laughs> Ben, my brother Ben, had a CD. This was like the last CD I think ever known to mankind. <laughs> and he goes, I don't really like this. And he just like gave it to me, and he was like, "You might like it." And I put it in, and I was like, "Oh, I love this shit." What was it? It's called Crosses. It's oh, a okay. it's a Chino. Yeah, yeah, it's a side Chino. project. I didn't yeah. even know that Crosses made that. They did CDs, I guess. Well, so I had one. That wasn't his other. He had another side project. Might have been bur- a burn. It wasn't Crosses. It was something else. Yeah. But, what was it? Um, oh, uh, sleep, sleep. Yes. Team, uh, sleep. Team, team Sleep. Team Sleep. Team yeah. Sleep. That was his first one. Yeah. 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 They yeah, played. I actually never really got into Team Sleep. I didn't but... either. And yeah. and Team Sleep, I think, played. They played... Crosses did what Team Sleep, I think, wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And Crosses did nothing. Well, I mean, just dialing in the sound. Yeah. 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 Well, and they. Well, so here's the thing. When you're talking about interviews that are disappointing, Chino is always one of those disappointing interviews. I was like, <sighs> are you alive? Like, I don't. Hmm. Which is a bummer because I was like, I love Deftones. Short answers. Bored. Bored. Like, and then they're and just Can't like scrambling. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, and sometimes you're like, maybe you're not asking questions that are poking them enough. But I'm like, my job for me as a journalist, I'm like, I'm not trying to stir up shit. Yeah. Or like, like I just want to know really. about like what this new music is about yeah. and what's happening in your life. What did you and, interview him for? Um... One was the the last time was Crosses because they came and played at Crescent Ballroom. Oh, such a good venue. I know. I love Crescent. And <sighs> so I interviewed him to preview that show. That's interesting that he wouldn't be a good interview on with Crosses because that I know a lot of times like these guys who like are in these big bands when they do their side projects they're like giddy again yep, yeah, about a thing sure. you, you know what I mean you, yeah dude. like Deftones like if they got to do another record that is work you know what mm-hmm. I mean that is the nine to five you know that's yeah. the thing that pays the bills and so you're kind of like eh, another record but like Cross is like a is like a passion you know what I mean yeah, yeah. so and sometimes people are just distracted or you catch them on a bad day I mean I yeah. can't imagine how that would be to have to, you know, be like, oh, I have like 10 interviews today. Or well, like next time, twist one week, up like, and call Steph. 
yeah. and do that interview. And just talk about UFOs and Because then you guys right? could just get <laughs> blazed and talk about all, whoever, whatever yeah. happens. That Bring up a, com- a conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah. But and I will say. You and Steph will have a blast. Yeah. Like, I felt so, and then I've. With Pantera, I've been able to interview, I mean, every member since, obviously, except for Dime. And then with the new, what are your thoughts on just like the Phil Anselmo and the Illegals performing Pantera songs? Vulgar display of power. Yeah, like. What else is he going to do? I mean, have you got? You, I I totally get. I that. gotta make some money. I mean, do, like. I mean, we, if they came to town, I would totally go see it. Yeah. But. <clears throat> It's interesting because I was at Nam like a, before COVID hit in California. Did you guys ever go there? I never no, went to Nam. Never Nam. No. Yeah. I never really, there was never really a reason for me to. Yeah. Go. I mean, I when I was able to get you know, when I was like in the thick of writing and able to get press passes to a lot of these things or festivals. I mean, it was. I'm just so happy I took full advantage of it because yeah. I just don't really know yeah. <laughs> that's going to happen well, ever and again. Just the personnel there is. That's a go- that's a fuck that's a place yeah, to be. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So we were a Brit. I was with Brittany. Yeah, yeah Brittany Hay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we were like at this. We couldn't. There was like we couldn't find a place to like get a drink even. And we we're just trying to get dinner. So we end up at this like little dive bar. And we're sitting next to these dudes and like uh, one of them. I like went to the bathroom and came back and I, I must have had my hair in a ponytail because he was like, "Is that a CFH tattoo on your neck?" And I was like, uh-huh. "Yeah." And he was the guitarist Phil had just hired oh, to oh, for the illegals or play what? and the illegals for the specific Pantera sets. And I did not believe him. I was like, you're fucking full of shit. Well, that would be a weird thing to lie about. It would be. But I was like, <laughs> so, this just seems like a weird. That just seems like what? No. No, that can't be true. <laughs> no, sure, not true. And, but then sure as shit. Yeah. Nice. And I was like, that's crazy. So we ended up like hanging out with him for the rest of the night. And I was like, he was like, oh, you're a journalist. I can't give you the scoop on what's happening. And I was like a total nerd about it. And I'm like, I get that. But I'm not really that type of journo. You know, here's sure. Is that the journo? Is that the journo? The journo? The, the enemy. <laughs> I'm not the, the enemy. Here's the thing. <laughs> Don Felder still plays Eagles songs when he goes out and tours solo. Because he's not in the Eagles. But what else are you going to do? He probably wrote a few songs yeah. and it's fine. That's Phil's life right now. Like, yeah. yeah, he can do whatever. Any down or super joint song he wants to do. He's going to go do Pantera songs, dude. I know. And people are going to pay to see it. And the, is Rex in the band? No. No. It's just, Rex it's, is done. Well, Rex isn't done. He's still, is he still in, um, God, what's that band name that he, I don't want to say it has like Brown in the name. Because his last name is Brown. <laughs> okay, so his name. <laughs> no, what is that? Si- or something? Something kills. I don't remember what his side. So project he started. Was a, he did a thing. But what Phil's doing? Yeah, he's had a side project. Phil's. I mean, I think Phil's just gonna live the rest of his life doing that. Shit, yeah, but know? what Phil's doing is an actual. They're doing vulgar display of power, like the full set, and it's. His band he's had forever, but they're just doing like the full Pantera. Go for it. I mean, yeah, it's like it's the closest thing anyone young now. That's what I mean. If they came to town, like I would go see it. Yeah, sure. But I don't hate it. But I I mean, like I get. What are you gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? I mean, I get. He could start another band. Because how does he even do right now? How old is he? Fifty? No, dude. Yeah, yeah, he's. Yeah, he he just had his fiftieth birthday. Yeah. I was two thinking years older. Ago? Oh. I think it was two years ago. 50 Phil? Dude, come on. I think he's just but you've he's peaked, a character. Brother. Yeah, and of he course like, he's a character. He doesn't drink or anything. He like works out hardcore, I guess. Like, yeah, he's, he's like probably, a vegan he's now. Ripped. Which he is, be a happens to all these guys, which I I'm think like, if I feel you've like that's done what we should this, all do at 30. I think if you've done this for that long, yeah. yeah, you better quit doing everything and be a vegan. Yeah. Well, he just should be a public <laughs> speaker because, like, every time I watch like any interview with him, yeah. I am fully engaged. Yeah. I don't know why, he's, really. Because very charismatic. It's because he's got that voice. Well, and he, and, and he should do it. Do it so he, well. he should do what Alice do Cooper's again. doing. And he, and he, he should have a fucking radio show. Yeah. Where he, he just should. plays all the choice nugs. Say, say. That's a really say, good idea. Say, as Phil Ensemble, say, I went to Peter Piper Pizza today. I went down the slide. There's a slide? No. <laughs> ah, there's not. I went to the goddamn Chuck Peter Cheese. Piper pizza Chuck today. 
Chuck E. Cheese. It was actually a Chuck E. Cheese fuck. I went down the slide. I went down the slide, man. Vomit. Vomit everywhere, man. I thought it. I thought COVID. I thought it was my, <laughs> I thought it was my leaky butthole. I thought it was my leaky butthole, man. But I looked to the oh left. Oh my god! But it wasn't. I looked to the left, and it was Cher. It was her leaky butthole. Shit. You sound hell. exactly the only <laughs> missing thing is dropping the f bomb like every other word. Yeah, and a little more like cigarette, no, a little more Texas really twang, a little good. more or Louisiana twang. Wow, yeah, I think that that's was, where he's from. That was but. good. Wasn't that pretty good? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes. I would have applause. All right. You you know what's crazy is you're like oh when I when I interviewed Chino it's like. I had no idea the fucking catalog of interviews that you've done. So you did Chino multiple times, it sounds like, right? I did Chino multiple times. Oh, you <laughs> dirty, dirty. You did it. You did it. Is your you husband dirty, watching this? Dirty. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but so. Oh my god. But you that did. Actually, I'm gonna go, go do Chino. I just have real to say quick. one thing. So my, so my husband. So he works in land development, and he. What does that mean? So he's is he like tilling wheat. No, that's not what right I mean. land development. Is that sounds no. right. Is so he he's, t- he's basically he's got other people doing t- that tilling <laughs> soil. So he's a home builder, but he um so he works for a company, so he helps find land like for properties, but not like big developments. Like um they do they do like individual properties like on on one to three acres that type of thing. Okay, like, where. Um, I mean, wherever they can find land. So, like, that's why I live in Cave Creek. We move, like, every couple of years you and live in flip Cave houses. Creek? Yeah, it was a drive, man. Damn, dog. That's <laughs> fucking gnarly. And then they were building, like, a new river and, like, all these places. So, um, they're stealing from the Indians? Which is closer yeah. to you okay. than we are. <laughs> yeah. New River is. Basically. <laughs> Native well, Americans, no, Richard. Not getting into that. <laughs> Politically. No, I meant, I meant. Uh, um, actual Indian, oh, East, East, Eastern. Indian. Yeah, I meant from so, India. Anyways, going back. <laughs> dot so, not feather. Yeah, dot so, not feather. Oh god. So years ago, <laughs> I went to the Golden God Awards in LA. Okay. Um, to do interviews on their black carpet. Oh damn. And uh, also insensitive, but continue. <laughs> Oh what? The carpet's black, and I have to feel bad. <laughs> on their black carpet, I don't even Howard, think about that. Oh my Howard gosh. from Kill Switch is walking down like I don't this like is this a sensitive guy. <laughs> or he's like, about time they got a black. I like carpet. The, the little feet movement. Yeah, that's my, oh, and real I'm a, quick, I'm a Mary, real Marianne, quick. Yeah. While we're on that, have you seen that video of their new song with Howard and Jesse? No, no. I it. oh, it's fucking. I. I That's actually awesome. just watched a video of uh, with uh, I said to kill and uh, Howard. I think they just came out with a video. Oh, yeah, yeah oh. like a collab. So no, yeah, Kill Switch kill, just right? put out a vid- uh, music video, new song. I don't remember what it's called. With both, but it's it's Howard and Jesse singing. Oh, it's my. fucking awesome. Oh wow! Dude. Yeah, dude, gangster. That's really nice. It is. Yeah. That's it's nice. good That's- that they're good. Yeah. yeah, you know, because there's Howard Killswitch and there's Jesse Killswitch. Yeah, and I'm sure when Jesse wanted to come oh, back, he was crazy. probably like, he was probably very sweet about it. Like, yeah, go ahead. Even though Howard worked fucking hard to like be in that band for mm-hmm. a, a decade, basically. Yeah, yeah. and it's and like they wrote then, some choice fucking nugs. some fucking mm-hmm. reggae dunga dunga dunga. Yeah, and then like so the, the 36 honestly, album. Honestly, that's still my favorite. Yeah. The yes, first days, yes. Like. Yeah. Oh God. Oh, rest inside the flames, and then you hear Brock throw his scream down, and it's good. <laughs> and then and Howard. then Howard comes in. And it's like, sit down, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I this saw guy's that got that. it. Yeah. I saw, I saw, it's I like, could it. you imagine being screamed out like that? I saw him <laughs> do a tutorial on screaming. Yeah. Oh. And I was like, that guy's got wind. Well, I was, because, you know. I just thought you screamed. Like, you either can do it or you can't, and, yeah. like, you just go for yeah, it. Yeah, there's, you know no, I mean? there's no tips. But he was like... What do you mean? <laughs> I feel like, like for you, like, you have the screams, so, like, you, yeah. you must know that there is a little bit of, like, a technical art to it. No, see, that no, is... It. Just that's it? not the kind of musician yeah. I ever amazing. was. Here's the thing. Like, when you were talking about writing, where, like, you, like, you can only see as far as, like, the headlights go, mm-hmm. with music, for me specifically... People have asked me in the past, not obviously not now, but like, how do you write a song? Like, how does that happen? And honestly, it is like this weird manifestation, like the universe just gives you this moment where you are on a guitar or you're in the shower or whatever is happening. Like there's just this moment where it comes in. 
there's no there's no way to explain it for me there's no way to to guide somebody it, like if I was to try to explain it to somebody, oh, how did you write that melody? That just melody happened. was really, it just comes in and you, it's just like a moment where the universe gives you a gift. Yeah. And it's like, for me, like that, that's the closest to God. I feel like I've, I could ever have become, you know, like there's no way I could have been closer to God than in those moments where it was and, unexplained. And a lot of times, like for me, it was like my, my, my back was against the wall too, Mm -hmm. where like I knew I had to have lyrics for like a song or I knew I had to have a melody for a song and it was next week and every second (laughs) is ticking by and I have not completed it. Cause like the way that I write songs (laughs) is the, here's the way that it usually went, right? Deadline. So the group, (laughs) if, if I didn't write the guitar part, the group writes a song, right? So we're sitting in and, and then it played it's played over and over and over again and you just keep hearing it and then you get on the microphone and you start basically singing gibberish but you're trying to find the melody and to me the most important thing as a writer you're not going to probably relate to this but for me the most important thing is the melody right and so if the melody is good it feels like often more often than not the lyrics don't fucking matter and if you ask most lyricists that aren't really trying to fucking be super fucking you know artsy fartsy they'll tell you the lyrics rarely mean anything to them it just fit Mm -hmm. syllables fit i needed this word so i i I added this word because it had the proper syllables Mm -hmm. right so if you can nail the melody melody comes from nowhere it just it just uh, it's a guitar solo it just comes whatever it's the same thing it's like just throwing down notes and so that make you go oh boner yeah boner town Town. yeah and so i so that you can say whatever you want behind them (laughs) they fit in the structure of the song too fit in the structure yeah Yeah, right like but that is a good point because if you listen to some songs with really phenomenal melodies the in the the lyrics you're like is lyrics are kind of terrible sometimes. Yeah. Like, I or get very, knocked very out and I get up again. <laughs> like those great hits. And how but good was that song? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, no, he was drinking is, whiskey drinks. He was drinking vodka drinks. Yes. He was yeah. drinking cider drinks. He was, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> songs that remind him of the good times. I mean, there were but songs also that, bad times. <laughs> right. And uh, Johnny Boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and Johnny Boy. And, you know, Johnny Boy. <sighs> or whatever. <laughs> but I thought that was cool because, like, if you're writing that way, it feels like you're not forcing anything. And it's just, like, it's just coming out and it's, it's, it is what it is. Like, mm-hmm. there's no way to explain that to somebody. Be like, why yeah. did the story go that way? Why did it take this weird twist? Be like, I don't know, man. That's just what Just like happened. you. Just like what you're writing down on your novel. Yeah. It just spills out. Yeah, it out. makes sense. And I love that. So you've done... It's organic. Uh, mm-hmm. I know we've... T- <laughs> we, we or godly. What, what are the... What's the... What's the... T- I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you've been asked this before. <laughs> what is the best interview you've ever done? And maybe it's not like the height of... What was the best interview you... you Not only was the a person that you wanted to meet, it was a person that you... Or not Maybe not met, but like talked to on the phone or whatever... But then they were also an incredible interview. It was like, engaging, and it mm-hmm. was like you walked away going, Whoa. "I got something there." Yeah, that was wild. Um, I'd probably have to say, "Happy birthday, love." I mean, that's forty-five minutes on the phone with Plant, dude. Yeah, it was eight p.m. Shit, I mean, he had tea and crumpies. Yeah, he had well, tea that and wasn't crumpies. actually what I was say. He probably had. He probably had a sandwich cut in fours. Yeah, we just think that because we're little stupid fanboys. Yeah. I don't know. I, it was. <laughs> And it was insane. Probably had a um, cucumber uh, white bread mayonnaise sandwich, cut in fours, and tea. Crust off. I crust would do off. That. I would yeah. do crust, that. Crust off. Yeah, take that crust off, dude. Or maybe maybe some uh, dill <laughs> cream cheese. Oh God, <laughs> dude. Boner. So uh, talk uh, boner town. Yeah, I just you know, dill <laughs> is one of those things that doesn't come around so much, but when it does, it. <laughs> Fucking comes around. Slaps. Yes. It, yeah, you guys, it, it that really like used does. to be like your favorite word. <laughs> like, back you know in the what day, I'm saying? Like, like, dude, when yeah. dill is used tastefully, yes. fuck. 
that's it's what, good. That's like all you guys would like <laughs> say was dill, dill weed or dill. I don't know. Yeah. It was like oh, yeah, your guys' favorite word, no, right? Yeah, now, we just, now we yeah. literally just refer to the, the, the herb. Cream cheese. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. Talking about there the was herb. lots of words that came Adults. and went from her. Yeah. Now, we're we're talking now we use a dill in an adult. Yeah, way. we're talking Thank compound yeah. butters now. Yeah. Yeah, because you're like a, you do a lot of cooking. I love to cook too, actually. Like if I didn't go to journalism school I would have gone to culinary school would for you sure. have? but to answer your question yeah. I would have to say number one I mean two come to mind for some reason but right, give give two and then we'll <clears throat> we'll break it down to the one so the the few times I've interviewed Rob Halford he's always so amazing and he always gives a lot of great information and he is the he is he's a musician who like actually he, he remembers me and he does research on me before he's, a phone call, like this is crazy. Oh, shit. So yeah. one, so I've talked to him four times. The Robbie Halfy? Yeah, the second because he has a house out here too. Well, yeah, Richard calls him. Bobby. I know. I did a fucking. I did a fucking commercial with him. You did? No way. Yes. Um, can I see this? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Should we put it on now? <laughs> I want to see it right now. Oh yeah. Uh, well, so you know. Well, text it to her. He text is. it to her when you know. I'll text okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Text yeah. It to me. yeah. There was a yeah. There was a whole. I we did a whole podcast on it. Yeah. Okay, me and Robbie well, Hell. I missed. That. He was a sweetie pie, and he and he fucking was like he took a banana off the off the table. Another he's, one. He's like hello, love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a really sweet man. He well, and he doesn't. You know, he just doesn't have anything to hide and he doesn't care because he, you know, spent so much time of his life hiding yeah. his yeah. identity. Um, but one of the so I th- actually it was the first time I interviewed him. It was right after <laughs> December 8th <laughs> because <laughs> he called for the interview and he was like, I just where are you from? You keep throwing from Kansas. Me- yeah, no, I know. But you keep <laughs> going like. He called. He like, called. Where are you from? Did I just have an accent? <laughs> God damn it. Do I've actually picked up on that a little bit. I've heard a couple. When you drink cold. bourbon, you're just from New York or yeah. what happened? No, I didn't mean to do that. I'm okay. sorry. I'm, now I'm going to be all self-conscious. No. 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 So no. He, God damn so it. So he was like, I read the article you did about, uh, it was a review of Dime Fest, like in honor of his oh, death. Dope. And he's like, I read that and I was really good. Like I've always wanted to go to that when Joe's Grotto was open. Dude, how fucking awesome is that? It's yeah, like I, was, I read your thing. I was like, what? what? When do you have time to do that? Bobby. Shit? I'm like, did your yeah. publicist tell you to say that? You're like, Bobby Boucher. But he, he's just always really no. open. And he had a, uh, so I had a a teen, a, like a local teen. I volunteered at Alice Cooper Solid Rock Teen Center. And there was a teen there who is obviously a teen. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Quite a writer we have on. <laughs> <laughs> Which would teen center? She's like, I read your book. Teens, it's good, but you said teen 50 times. So can we just rewrite it? <laughs> this guy was struggling a lot um, like with his sexuality, and he really looked up to Rob Halford a lot. And he wanted to be a music journalist, but he felt like there wasn't a place in heavy metal for like a, like a, a gay, gay jer- male teen writer. And, he, and he, I, I was like, who would be like your idol to talk to if you could talk to anybody. And he said, Rob Halford. So when I talked to Rob Halford, I was like, there's this teen <laughs> that is struggling a lot. And he, was a fucking teen. he <laughs> would be like, I really think it would help him out yeah. in his life right now if you were to reach out to him. Yeah. And I said, I would, you know, I'm no pressure, but here's his information. I'm going to email you his phone number and his email address. And, if you could reach out, I think this would be amazing. And he did. Wow. And yeah, how fucking awesome is that? Honestly, like I just felt so good for this kid because he was it just I think it just like really gave him this like confidence to actually be who he is as a yeah. person. He's like, all right, I'm going to do this shit. Yeah. Nice. And, you know, their conversation was fucking. I'm sure it was. Yeah. I was just so happy he actually reached out because because he was like, I'll do it. Happen, like, I'll dude. do it. You, you know? made that happen. I, like. I mean, that's, you that's know, it's awesome. a part of what it's like when you're writing, if you're having someone even read your shit and learning something from it yeah. or feeling good about it. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Stand up with music. So. so Robbie Halfey is so bizarre that that's the one that that sticks out um, just just because th- there's history in the podcast and in my life. Mm-hmm. What was number two? It was between two people. So number two was an interview I did with um, <clears throat> the Butcher Babies. 
and uh, Christina Scavia from Lacuna Coil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, so the Butcher Babies are actually a... That's crazy. I don't know. I've, I don't know. <laughs> so they're a metal band, and they, they've been around for quite some time, but they started at... So they have two female lead singers that are the just... The Butcher Babies? Smoke shows, dude. Like, they're so hot. Mm. And they started out just by wearing, basically, like, <laughs> electrical tape over their nips as a homage to Wendy O. Don't, but, don't forget about that microphone. Don't That sorry. microphone's... You, you, I got it. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. just like... I, I just I, leaning I'm in a, close. I'm a stickler well, for the microphone. Okay, so the tape over the nips. We just want to make sure we got that. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah you're sounding great now. <laughs> tape X, over the nips. Tape over, over the nips. nips. Yeah, for, oh, for Wendy O. They have big tits. And I, yeah. Well, so they both used to work. Love for big tits. Playboy in some capacity, not oh. as models, but like on their broadcast channel. I mean, but these they're really even really cool. the broadcast channel chicks. But have big tits. These girl and I don't. So I feel bad promising it with this. But they're bras, bras snaps. But these girls have like metal scream. I mean, you got to look them up because they're phenomenal singers and their metal screams are insane. And I would go see them at Joe's Grotto and there'd be like six freaking people. It's like when I I used to go see In This Moment at Mm -hmm. the clubhouse in Tempe and there'd be like 10 people. Yeah. What the fuck are people doing with with their lives? We played with In This Moment where... we we had to put I think tables we played on top I don't remember exactly how it was a tiny little fucking dive bar yeah in like on the outskirts of California it was the Stuck Dudes and we it was Stuck Dudes right or no was it Vos I can't remember but do you remember playing within this moment yeah okay so it was it was Stuck Dudes and uh, <laughs> they fucking r- destroyed and she and because she gets she mm-hmm. gets like um, what's the what's that character in uh, Street Fighter that it that is like the green like we uh Blanca. Blanca. Yeah. yeah. She she would get she would get down like Blanca and be like rawr, rawr, and she would and I was like, wow, this chick's fucking gnarly. And then like mm-hmm. two years later they were fucking huge. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's And then a piece of shit guy that now. we know uh, is dating her now. But and, go ahead. Oh, you don't like him. I hate him. Really? Oh. I yeah. like him still. I don't like him. I don't know him personally. No, I but know. I know he's who a he's you're a fucking about. he's a Little bitch is what I mm. think. I, I just like what are you talking I, about. I don't like when people fucking. I I asked him to come on the podcast, and then he read he read the. It was like a very sweet, like message, and then he <laughs> read it, and never messaged me back. And I was like, that's it. And then I, now I hate him. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's not a very good reason. Are you no, sure good he's en- the one who read it? Good it was a text me. message. Yeah. I'm, it doesn't. Who, okay. And if I hate somebody, who cares? You know what I mean? <laughs> What's the big deal? I know who you're talking about. It's no. not a big problem. Anyways, go continue. Sorry. So the Butcher Babies Butcher is Babies. very similar. So it's two female lead singers. Like they started out with that as an homage to Wendy O, but also to get, you know, oh, and they're attention hot, baby. because they're, Are they? you know. I got, well, no, I'm looking. I'm He's right looking at them. Well, you know. So um, he does now. They, I mean, now they're they're pretty big and they don't do the electrical tape anymore. They yeah. wear shirts now, but. Oh, I thought they just would be arrested. Oh, no. Oh. But they would literally, the first time I interviewed them, where they were, they love Pantera and they did a Pantera cover for me at their show. And I was like. I love you. What'd they yeah. do? Like my husband, he's constantly like, I feel like you're going to leave me. Like for, for Here's the other thing. <laughs> for that. Yeah. yeah the, wh- while you mentioned him, is he down with the Pantera and the metal and the ding, ding, dong? He is, but it's more like I got him more into metal and he's gotten me more into reggae. Oh, okay. Like, you know, like the band Pepper? Yeah. Okay. So I never had heard of Pepper. Yeah. Oh, shit. You were that metal. You've never heard of Pepper. Pepper. That's how metal she was. I like Pepper like a lot. Pepper. Yeah. yeah. Great. So we, yeah, I love so Pepper. So he loves Pepper and a bunch yeah, of Reggae Rock. And then, and yeah, and chip. then like yeah. we both love mm. 311 a lot, too. So, well, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, so he, yeah, he's totally into metal, but I mean, not as much as me. Right. But he gets it. And he's just like, meh, all right, this is what it is. This is what you do. This is what you love. So... Um, so the other interview was at Marquee, and I was interviewing the Butcher Babies and the lead chick from Lacuna Coil, and which, which I was nervous because they're all very intimidating, singularly, but together it was kind of intense. And the interview turned into this very interesting thing about how I might possibly be coming off as sexist in some of my articles about female oh. metal musicians. Oh, interesting. Because they were like... 
we're so sick of people asking like what it's like to be females in metal. And it is, I didn't ask them that, but yeah. I did ask them a question centered around like, you know, like what do you find is like a big challenge? Like, what, you know, when you're balancing relationships and this and that. And they're like, no one asks men that, you know. And, and they are so, ha- their shit's revving right now yeah. already yeah. because they're heavy metal female chick singers. Mm-hmm. And like they're already ready for your question exactly and they want to jump on it like a motherfucker too and this was one of your top interviews well because it made me it completely turned me on my head and made me very you were aware questioning your no it it made me realize like oh like i think this is a really good point like they like literally the art the title of this article was something like three heavy metal front women made me wonder if i'm sexist and oh, it was wow. completely like I think that was a title actually. Actually, that's a great title. And mm. it, it was just very interesting because it wasn't like a mean interview. They weren't trying to be rude. We were just having like a honest conversation between women, you know, who all work in heavy metal in some capacity. And mm. they were like, you know, we're just so sick of our gender even being an issue at all. Yeah. And they're like, so let's do this interview. Yeah, but we you guys wear right. fucking tape on your tits. What do you mean? It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's you're true. also and you're also no, that that is true. But it was also so that's what I said too. Yeah, I was like, well, part of it. you can't say yeah. that you weren't trying to use your looks or sexuality in this yeah. way, you know. But they're yeah. like, well, this is how we feel sexy, and certain guys dress ways that they feel sexy, like not wearing a shirt on stage, you know. And I'm like, yeah, that's true too, but. It, 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 so it was just a very interesting interview, and it was a very uncomfortable interview yeah. for me. You got a little sweaty. Because, you're oh, like, I was this so is, sweaty, like, dude. Yeah, you're like, this is fucking getting heated <laughs> like, right now. Yeah, and I was just like, this is not how I thought this was going to go. Mm-hmm. But it went in a, in a direction that I think was a good one and an yeah. important one. I wonder if you'd be able to utilize your ability to get interviews for a podcast. Like to do your own podcast mm-hmm. and and maybe like you could. Is it possible to broadcast like do, broadcast? Broadcast. Plus, <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Dude. <laughs> I, I, I was did. going to if you were. <laughs> they called me. <laughs> I wonder if the podcast. So if you're if you're if you're freelancing a uh, an interview, you're. You're essentially going to give it to like a magazine, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. okay. So at that point, they own it, and then you couldn't, because like here, here's the crazy thing about what you do. What? I, I, we just, I just clicked on the email. Yeah. It's just some fucking guy fucking a chick on like a balcony. Yeah. A black guy. Yeah. (laughs) What is going on here? Someone just sent that to our email. No, no, no. It. Is that Cam's Corner or something that I? That's an old. <laughs> I brought that up. Oh, oh you you stumbled upon something Richard had up there. I mean, it's just up though for some reason. Yeah, I know it, dude. It's like a landmine, dude. <laughs> it keeps, Careful, bro. It, it keeps coming up too. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna fucking blow up over there. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. The desktop is no. A I just landmine. I, th- that picture. I it blew me away, and I was I like, know. "How is he fucking this chick this way?" But um, <laughs> did you censor it? Yeah, I, I, I just blacked out the faces. I don't know, dude. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> Sounds like you do. <laughs> no, but it would be... So So you do... All, all your interviews um, go to text. They go to a readable yes. thing. And so the cool, the, it would be really fucking rad to hear you do an interview with some of these people. Like these... I mean... The, the the list, the amount of people that you've interviewed is fucking insane. And like if you could get some of those done, even if it was, you know, like a Zoom thing, which I fucking hate. But like mm-hmm. um, it would be good enough to just put out into the universe, like put out so that people could actually, you know, hear them. And yeah. Because that's the way that a lot of this stuff is consumed now. So I like know. you're competing with an audio world or a video, a video world mainly. And so those mediums, I don't even know, like, dude, I've read like, I think w- I've read one book in my whole life. And like <laughs> most of my consumption is audio mm-hmm. or video. Right. And so it would be rad if you could use some of your pull to like get some of these interviews and then put a podcast out. Cause y- your the, the caliber of interviewee 
is so significant that you could bring people. T- we had we had Wes on, right? Mm-hmm. And Wes is like I a friend him. and like a family member, a pseudo family member now, but like he's just like a close person to us. That one has 13,000 views on YouTube. And most of the comments and shit are like, why are you talking to these idiots? <laughs> Like they have 200 followers, really? like 200 subscribers. But then that, so if we, if, if Cam and I were able to acquire people of his caliber on a regular basis, like you sort of seem to have the ability to do, although it goes to like a magazine and like when you're saying, Hey, listen, I want to do this interview. They know that it's going to this magazine. Exactly. Right. So there's got to be a way, though, Lauren. There's got to be a way to where, like, maybe Robbie Halfie would be, like, a good one. You just be like, yo, Rob. Like, you guys have, like, this good relationship. Like, he's such a sweetie pie. You say, hey, Rob, will you please just do me a solid? Like, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to get a podcast. Um, like, you know, I, I need, I, I want a little bit of, uh, I'm trying to get it trying going. Trying to get some traction. Yeah. Trying yeah. to get some traction. And I've I bet there's a couple it. that and, you could do. And I've Vincent, thought about it. And Vincent Fournier. Fournier. And it's cool because like, <laughs> well, dude, Brady, like when so you do Brady those, when you do those telephone ones, are you recording them? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. So I record all them those. all because if yeah. something happens where if, if at any time someone was like, I never said this. I mean, I, I record them for legal purposes. Okay. I mean, nothing's ever happened, but do the one ha- time you don't you have them all. You yeah. Dude, I have I mean, them the, back on little like tapes, like stacks of little tapes, like right, handwritten yeah, labels. No, so I've thought about it. Brittany and I were actually going to start a podcast a couple years ago, but it just the schedule wouldn't work because you know she would be on tour, and it, it was just it just seemed like it was going to be way more work than it was worth. And then I was going to do it on my own, and then it was just there's kind of friction there because we were like, oh, we kind of like talked about doing this together. And then I just kind of fell off. But I have thought about it. God, that's so crazy. The problem, though, is it's like people, I get these interviews for Based a on few the- reasons. One, if they're like, oh, we know this, you know, like the Phoenix New Times is, I think it's like the fifth largest alt weekly publication in the country. Like they know it, it has really? a big circulation nice. uh-huh. online and yeah. in person. You got LA and then New York and whatever else. And yeah. Texas, then probably. it's like if the publicist and I have worked together for a long time and they like me because they're like, you've you haven't only taken me up on the chances to talk to big names like you've you've done stuff with like lesser known bands that we're trying to get out there. Like I, I remember. So when um, oh my gosh, the Greta Van Fleet. Yeah. When they first like Cam loves them. came out like mm. uh, their publicist. <laughs> I did. She, their publicist, they, I, I know, I like him too, but, um, they, I, I, th- when I heard their song, I was like, fuck, that's fire, dude. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I don't like them because they claim they don't know who Led Zeppelin is. I just don't, I just, I'm like, and then I'm like, oh, okay. They don't know well, that. yeah. Well, he, th- they've been asked. Well, yeah. Well, your I, influence. Yeah. And they're like, no, not at all. And I'm like, that, I don't, I, I don't think that's true. And Robert Plant said some like really great shit about them too. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, even you know, in our interview, he said it's he clear. Them. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. just. Yeah, I, I was like, I honestly, I think Cam was the one who showed me them. I did, mm-hmm. and yeah. I, tr- he didn't say anything. He just like showed me a song, and I was like, I, it's, I can't believe Zep came out with a new track. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> no, all. It yeah, was. I, I agree. I so when their publicist first reached out to me years ago, she's like, "There's this new band, and I swear they're going to be the next big thing. Like, will you please do an interview with them?" So it's things like that where it's like you know, like you you know, it's like tit for tat. You're like you're yeah. So um, that that's another reason why they'll be like, okay, you want this interview with a big person? Like, I'll get that for you because I know you have our back. You know what's crazy? So with a podcast, it's hard because they'd be like, well, you don't even have any listenership. It doesn't matter, like that yeah. you're I don't know, you? listenership if that's a thing. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you're kind of you? just starting why, from why scratch, which yeah. is fine. But you know, we have 260 subscribers, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's all right. It's crazy that. Um, <laughs> Tit. You'll you probably get more quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's crazy that that tits and tats <laughs> are words tits. to describe breasts. Yeah. I haven't even said that for I don't know where that phrase came Fat from. Fat tat. Tit for tat. Tit for tat. 
<laughs> it's where does that come? Both are both mean fucking breasts. I just but it's don't, tit for tat. Well, I think and tits and tats. Are you certain that there are out uh, that there are circles outside of ours that say fat tats? I don't. I don't. You don't know that. That's true. I, I we don't. just we know we do that. Yeah, we say fat tats. <laughs> yeah, so fat tats. Uh, Probably not a thing. Too, Is it over? I mean, we're <laughs> yeah, we still did it. Okay, well, let, we're, 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 we're uh, one thirty-four. <laughs> Are we? Nah, I can't be right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give you. We're gonna do one thing before we leave. Oh, okay. And thank you so much for coming. Yeah. And we will do. We should do a follow up. Follow up interview because <laughs> I don't know if we really got all the things. I we know. To get. I feel like we could hang out for longer. We should, and we will, and we'll have you back. On. I want to. Yeah. 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 These things always. We're done, and then it's like, fuck, man. Okay. Well, plus we haven't this, all talked in so long. That's what, yeah. How long has it been? About. Would you say one whole decade? Yeah, at least. At least we definitely, definitely haven't <laughs> talked in too long. Either. We <laughs> haven't <laughs> talked. We haven't it, had a when coffee. When was the last in, time we talked? We haven't had a coffee in. <laughs> I mean, with Cam, it's been a long time. Yeah, like uh, we fifteen didn't, years. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, you were not pleased with. Yeah. Me oh, bias. Yeah. Bias. But I mean, you and I hadn't talked either. But I I knew that you like. Yeah, I'm didn't not, hate yeah, but you know directly. how long ago that was. I had no I know, idea what it, even what happened. So, so I think I still like you. Listen, we wrote the God, song. I got I'm it out. Say it's gonna. I, I mean, I was it's just being be a like buddy's buddy. Fifteen years. I'm saying. Nah, nah. Cam's Cam's, yeah. Cam's cool now. Yeah, fifteen years. I yeah. think. Yeah, dude. And because we we love you. Like you were, you're great. You're like Thanks, you're man. you're you were always the dopest shit. And so you know when you broke our friend's heart, it's like. <laughs> What are we gonna do? That's I, how we're gonna I, react. I wrote a song and and Cam fucking just didn't talk. Was a bitch. He deserved to get his heart broken. Let's face it. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was his turn. You guys, it, it was, it was uh, his. You guys turn. were you guys were young. You were children. We were we were children. <laughs> okay, so we this game. I know. I, yeah, it's like how do you? Even, I will say that. Oh, never mind. Yeah, say it. Oh, dude. I just it's just funny because I like I have run into him a few times and. It's always been like when I'm with Br- like I'll be out with Brandon and we were yeah. uh, Sh- uh, Seamus McAffrey's or something in downtown, yeah, downtown Phoenix. Yeah, downtown. Yeah, I love and that place. And we went there. <laughs> we ran into Anthony, and for some reason, it was like all over Brandon. And he like wouldn't get yeah. off of him, and he's like, "I want to buy you drinks, and I want to buy you drinks." And I went to the bathroom and like came out, and Brandon's like. Get your ex boyfriend off of me! Like he won't yeah. stop he, like touching me. He went the other way, and I'm like, <laughs> I, better that way than being rude. But it was just so yes. funny because I was yeah. like, what is what's going on? I what's do going that. On in life? I do that. Shit it's a coping too. mechanism. Yeah, I, I, and it's just and but that's how it is every time it's happened at like Patty's. By the way, sorry, I know we got to finish, but do you ever? Do you guys ever go out anymore in this area? Like I Saturday, I went. I, well, Friday I had dinner with Brittany in Old Town at the at the Maynard's wine oh, spot. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Missy, you know, does the golf cart, and she yeah. literally like br- just drove us around to give a tour because mm, I never nice. go in Old Town anymore. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? Like Patty, just everywhere. I'm like, there's just crazy lines, and I know it's Christmas. Yeah. Patty's, but Patty's, Patty's has been. Like lines. we went to Patty's. It was the only place where we like there wasn't a line, so we went in and we're just like, oh really? At Patty's? What was or it was like. Nine o'clock. I was at Patty's a couple months ago. Yeah, I've been I've been around there. It was. It just feels so different. Yeah, it's because we're older. We're just, old. We're just older. Yeah. yeah, I think that is the, the, what it is. The, the fucking bouncer. I, the last time I went to Patty's, he was like, um, "Give me twenty bucks. I'm getting right now." <laughs> is that Jason's dad? <laughs> Probably. That's who the it fucking was. bouncer yeah. is. <laughs> and my beautiful girlfriend throws him a throws him a Twandale. And we go in, and I, I, we, I didn't want to be there. It was, yeah, too, it was packed. too much. It was like a lot of chaos, and yeah. like you couldn't get to the bar. And I was like, I don't want to be here at all. And yeah. I felt horrible because she, she spent twenty bucks on it. Yeah. Okay, so we, we used to play this game kind of frequently. We don't play it anymore, and I know we're out of time. Um, <laughs> really, Taylor just needs to go to bed. But. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's called best to worst game of life experiences. Okay, and oh I am God. going to have you pick sweating. a card. Yeah, no, it's all good. Sometimes it's really dope shit. And you're going to answer this question. All right. And you're going to answer it truthfully. And you're going to give it to me. Oh, <laughs> this is actually a really good one. <laughs> this is like cheating. Here you go. 
I mean, that is kind of fucking funny. The planets aligned with that one. Okay, so give us the best concert you've ever been to and give us the worst concert you've ever been to and then we'll get the fuck out of here. God. God. Okay, best, I think I I I have to have a tie. Uh, I'll say it really quick. So best was the Rage Against the Machine reunion tour at Coachella. Oh. But I literally... It was actually right after Anthony and I broke up and I went with like <laughs> Trevor and Jeremy and all those dudes. And since they had no obligation to protect me, really, you know, because it was like, you're not no one's hooking up with you and you're yeah. no one's girlfriend. <laughs> I literally was like alone, like in the front of the mosh pit, like waiting for the band to go on. And then when they went on, I mean, it was like 200,000 people surging forward. And I was wearing flip flops because I was an idiot at Coachella and a Rage Against the Machine mosh pit. Yeah. Like, broke several toes, but had to. You did? Oh, yeah. Crap. <gasps> because I finally, because it was crazy. I mean, yeah. it was so intense. And so I finally just had to like crowd surf out like after the fourth song. But it was so, it was so incredible. And then. What was that concert where the people just died? What was that? Travis Scott. Yeah, Travis, yeah, Travis Scott. Scott. Yeah. God, that's bad. That could have been you? Eight. It was bad. People. Like I literally, my feet weren't touching the ground because there's all these like, just, you know. American Indians like up again like literally so tall and big like I was just being Not held Eastern up Indians. and they were so nice. <laughs> they were so nice though because they like were they were actually kind of protecting me I'm like where are my friends yeah um but that <laughs> was like, it she's was... got a Metallica shirt on get her get her to safety, <laughs> get her to safety. <laughs> um but you. that was just such an amazing experience <laughs> like seeing yeah rage fans. so rage. raging yeah rage, rage. against the machine um, is my it has always been my top concert I've Are ever been to. Are you going to go in April? No. No, th- I no because like I, I can't. I, what you was saw him in 96. Yeah. I, I I saw him at the fucking top of their game. And I'm not I can't <laughs> I can't pay $400. It was the very first time I've ever seen a crowd jump in unison. Yeah. So I went to the Meat Puppets and then like 2 months later my dad's like we're going to Rage Against the Machine. And it was the most insane thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It was it, the whole there was 20,000 people going goof, 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 yeah. goof, like this. And I was like, oh, this is the best thing. A guy came out of the crowd and his arm was like bent this way. Like he had broken his arm. And I was like and my dad like ha- held me by my shirt like this because I kept trying to like go, go like towards the stage. Anyways. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, what was the worst show you ever been to? Okay, the Some worst local show. show. <laughs> Some comfort. It was this band called Comfort for Change. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, a, the singer was really fucking drunk. Yeah. Worst show. Mm, worst show, worst show, worst show. Was it Crazy uh, Town? Uh, <laughs> Could have been. No, hang on. Just give me one second. <laughs> Lit. We played with Lit. Never saw it. Yeah, did, did you guys? Yeah. Yeah, we played with Lit. In Old Town. Ten years ago. I saw Cage the Elephant once, and it was, like, the worst experience. Really? So bad. I also like really? their music. I mean, I don't hate their music. I like their music. I just, I don't know. B- just boring? Was, no, it just was, like, off key. and. Oh, that's tough, because you can you can <laughs> say one that it's, like, some local band you don't know the name of, and that was shitty. Yeah, but you're like, trying to think of, like, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to think of something that's, like, oh, well, they suck. Well, and as a journalist, I'm, like, I feel like I can, well, and somebody loves music, I can always find something good. But, you know, one that don't, does don't come find. to mind was... The Deftones? Kitty. <laughs> Deftones have played yeah. some bad shows. This is going to probably sound weird, especially because... Weird. My a Leonard Skinner song was my wedding song, but I saw Leonard Skinner, aka I mean the entire new band, yeah, and yeah. Harry Rossington, and Prescott like and years company. ago, <laughs> and name. stayed at this terrible <laughs> hotel. I swear there's like blood stains on the walls, but the what? show was just like I was. I felt like it really. <laughs> that I know the living yeah, guy, so the living guy, <laughs> Gary Rossington. Yeah. It was so lackluster, like the uh, fact of even just like driving. I don't know. And that sounds weird because I, I love Leonard Skinner. And even if it's yeah. just like people replaying the music. But yeah. I would have to say that is in my bottom concerts for sure. Mm. Wow. Left a bad taste in your mouth. One of my yeah. favorite band of all time, Deftones, has, is the is my worst show of all time. And favorite. Yeah. Just the yeah, Deftones both. are my favorite and worst show ever. Yeah. Chino was oh fucking... Awful. 
remembered something. A comfort show might actually be one on my worst list because my brother got his knee broken at a comfort show. That's right. Oh my God, I remember that. To this day, like he had to go to physical therapy and my parents blame it. You brought your brother to a metal show. Like, well, I don't know why. They don't have the fill voice, but it's still to this day a thing in my family. Like that I brought my brother to a metal show and he got hurt, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember that <laughs> vividly that he broke his fucking knee. No, like some guy just saw a big tall guy in the mosh pit and was like, I'm taking him out. Was Doug he the Gorley. six eight one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Did we Anyways. Knocked him down a couple of fucking yeah, inches, so huh? That's that. Couple rungs. <laughs> well thank you again for coming on uh, we'll yes. have you on again we'll we'll i would love we'll, to we'll push it a few months just so like you know no, people not are like, we don't want to oversaturate this bitch yeah. again yeah yeah we <laughs> it's so weird like our, our, I, I wish we'd have had you on a year ago because like that's when we were fucking pumping you know what i mean yeah. people fucking hate us now i don't well, know well you just ran out of people so like lauren wise might be a good yeah. option <laughs> No, <laughs> Lauren Watts. She's calling herself Lauren Watts. We're actually, yeah, you did do that. Yeah. I, I mean, I. I That's I who it do. is to me. It's and your... you made me feel so bad in the beginning, dude. All I did was just say, "Wait." I know. Wait. I didn't try to make you feel bad. That is. Uh, I mean, I changed my name legally. Close. Like it. The the. I think it was our, for a four year anniversary. It was like, "Hey, here's your gift. My name change." Oh, that's sweet. But I mean, just professionally, I haven't changed it. it just yeah. it's too confusing. Yeah. It is a little. So it, it is. I'll just tell you straight I'm up. I'm sure Julia is. Roberts is married, right? Everyone's married. Yeah. yeah she was married <laughs> to Lyle thing. Lovett. Remember? All those people uh, are married. Lyle Lovett. Was she married to Lyle Lovett back no in the day? No shit. Yeah, you remember that? That was like no. a weird combo. But I know Lyle Lovett's drummer. Gary Drummers. Ross. Gary Rossington. <laughs> Gary Rossington. Uh, John Lovett? You know when they do Tuesdays Gone on Garage Days? Metallica. Oh, yeah. Garage sorry. Days, Tuesdays like, wait, Gone. And it's like, thanks, Jer. Thanks, Gare. Mm, yeah. It's Gary Rossington playing uh, guitar. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us on another episode of the Dick and Boonies podcast. Chock full of information. We shall see you guys next week. And thank you, Sweetie Pie, for coming. Yes. I, we really do appreciate it. We'll have you on again. I know I've said it se- seven times. Thank you for the whiskey. Uh, yeah. yeah, of course. And uh, you got- took that bottle down. <laughs> yeah, whoops. Like, share, subscribe, <laughs> fucking do some stuff. Do fuck, it. Do some you. stuff. Do it. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.